Hello, welcome to AC Picks and my Japanese socks film commentary, which relate to my upcoming film guide for women. My sock videos focus on mainstream movies and what they have to offer female viewers. These videos are directed primarily at women. Halloween is just around the corner, and every magazine seems to have come out with a list of classic Halloween movies this month, so I thought I would say a few words about half a dozen horror films that make it onto most of these lists. The following comments are just a sample of noteworthy inclusions from each movie. My upcoming film guide for women provides an in-depth look at each of them. If you've watched my previous film commentaries, you know that my focus is on the way the female characters are treated. I'm primarily interested in what happens to them and how they are spoken to and of. Let's do this chronologically. First up, Psycho, released in 1960. It was written and directed by men and is the story of a psychopath, played by Anthony Perkins, who brutally murders a woman, played by Janet Lee, who spends the night at his motel. Not only does Janet Lee appear in various states of undress, but the lead male is a peeping Tom. Perkins spies on her through a small hole in her motel room wall as she undresses, breaks into her room and stabs her repeatedly as she showers. There is an undercurrent of misogyny that runs through this Alfred Hitchcock-directed film, and the fact that it is a favorite with men should cause much more alarm than it does. Number 2, The Exorcist, released in 1973. It was written and directed by men and is the story of a famous American actress, played by Ellen Burstyn, whose twelve-year-old daughter, played by Linda Blair, mysteriously becomes possessed, prompting her to seek the help of a Catholic psychiatrist slash priest, played by Jason Miller. This movie has its fair share of red flags. The twelve-year-old girl appears in a nightgown while tied to, to a bed, alone in a room with two fully dressed men. Does no one else see a problem with this? She also appears in a bath. In three different scenes, men restrain her, and a man strikes her three times before choking her. Ellen Burstyn doesn't fare well either. For one thing, her daughter strikes her so hard, she knocks her to the floor. What's particularly noteworthy is the pornographic language used by the little girl. Here are some choice examples. She says of herself to a man, Keep away, the sow is mine. Fuck me, fuck me, fuck me. She also says of herself as she stabs her vagina with a crucifix, you bitch, do it, dot, 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 let Jesus fuck you, let Jesus fuck you, let Jesus fuck you. She also shouts at her mother, lick me, lick me. And referring to herself, do you know what she did, your cunting daughter? If you're wondering who wrote this truly disturbing script, it was William Peter Blatty. The fact that financing was secured for this film project is astounding. Number three, Carrie, released in 1976. It was written and directed by men and is the story of a teenage girl with telekinetic powers, played by Sissy Spacek, who is so badly harassed by her classmates that she kills them. Teenage girls appear naked and in, state and in states of undress, and one girl fillets a boy in a vehicle. We get teenage girls being slapped by a woman and a teenage boy. We get a girl smacking another girl in the head with a book and knocking her to the ground before continuing to hit her. She also drags her across a floor, locks her in a closet, and stabs her in the back. We get a girl trying to run another girl over in her car. Spacek falls down a flight of stairs. Her house is engulfed in flames and sinks into the ground while she's trapped inside. Another girl dies in a car explosion. Spacek's mother, played by Piper Laurie, is pinned to a wall by knives Spacek has bewitched to attack her. Laurie's body is pierced by five other bewitched kitchen utensils. Four women and girls die, over and above all the attendees of a high school prom. 
we have Stephen King to thank for this story. This is just one of many stories of his that demonstrate that he is no friend to women and girls. Number four, Halloween, released in 1978. It was written by a man and a woman and directed by a man. It is the story of a teenage girl, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, and her two girlfriends who are stalked on Halloween night by an escaped killer who killed his older sister 15 years earlier. Here again, teenage girls appear in, in states of undress, including topless. As in Psycho, the lead male is a peeping Tom. Here the psychopath watches teenagers making out. He also watches a girl standing at her window in just panties. A teenage girl is repeatedly stabbed by her little brother. Other teenage girls are stalked, assaulted, chased, stabbed, choked, strangled, and murdered by a man. And this is the story that kicked off a franchise that includes 11 movies. Clearly, there is a never-ending appetite in the film industry for men hunting women and girls. Number 5, The Shining, released in 1980. It was written by a man and a woman and directed by a man. It is the story of an American writer, played by Jack Nicholson, who loses his mind while working as the caretaker of a secluded hotel in the Rocky Mountains during the off-season and tries to murder his wife, played by Shelley Duval, and their son, played by Danny Lloyd. As with Psycho and Carrie, we are shown a naked female in a bath-slash-shower. Notice a trend yet? Here we are shown a young naked woman sitting in a bathtub. We also get two murdered little girls lying on a hallway floor covered in blood, as are the walls, next to a bloody axe. Shelley Duval is repeatedly bullied by her husband. When she locks herself in her suite to get away from him, he breaks down the door with an axe. He does the same thing when she locks herself in her bathroom. As if this weren't enough, he also refers to her as a bitch and says to her, I said I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just going to bash your brains in. I'm going to bash them right the fuck in. The story revolves around a man's attempts to murder his wife and another man who murdered his wife and daughters. It is based on yet another misogynist novel by Stephen King. And finally, number six, Friday the 13th, released in 1980. It was written and directed by men and is, and is the story of a group of young adults played by Adrian King, Janine Taylor, Robbie Morgan, Kevin Bacon, Harry Crosby, Laurie Bartram, and Mark Nelson, who are murdered one by one at a summer camp. Here again, teenage girls appear naked and in states of undress, including topless. It's full of inclusions for the benefit of, the male, of male viewers, like the girl who suggests playing Strip Monopoly. Seriously? The lengths filmmakers will go to to undress women and girls. And here again we see females being chased and hunted. Someone slits a girl's throat. Another girl is struck in the face with an axe that gets lodged in her skull. Yet another girl is pulled into a lake by a corpse and a woman is decapitated. It's worth noting that in all these movies, an attempt is made to murder the lead female. Also noteworthy is the fact that these movies all contain sexualized violence against females, and they have been very popular with male audiences for decades. Food for thought. My upcoming film guide for women contains 500 feature film reviews. I look forward to sharing my findings about mainstream movies of the 20th and 21st centuries and what they have to offer female viewers. My next video will focus on six more horror classics and should be up in the next few days. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Speak up and stay safe.